Okay, hello everyone. I'm Patricia Iweka Abadariki. I'm a scientist from Hokkaido University. Okay, so today I will be talking, my talk is gonna be about, it's gonna look like, or it's gonna be an orientation. It's gonna be a guide to a smooth and a beneficial heel step participation. And so I would like to call my today's talk, Heel Step, a Game Changer. Before I proceed, I would like to talk uh, briefly about my background. I'm from Delta State, Asaba. And I, of course, I went to uh, Eboyne State University. This is Eboyne State here. This is Delta State here. So I went to Eboyne State University to study biotechnology. And during my undergraduate studies at uh, Eboyne State University, I, I was shortlisted for a short exchange program at Hokkaido University, which is called the Houston Program. We, we, I, I, we went, I'm using we because I wasn't the only one, we were three. So we went to Hokkaido University. We came to Hokkaido University 2012, September 2012. 12. And before the ending, I said it was a one year program. So before the end of the program, which was in 2013, I got a MEST scholarship for my master's program. So I went back to Nigeria and I completed my undergraduate studies in biotechnology. And in 2014, 2014 was when I graduated and I came back immediately to Hokkaido University to the Laboratory of Agricultural and Fruit, Food Process Engineering for my master's and PhD program. And after my graduation in 2019, my PhD graduation in 2019, I got a, a position as a postdoctoral research associate at the Field Science Center for Northern Biosphere, of course, at Hokkaido University. Yeah. Okay, now let's... I want to define what is HUSTEP. HUSTEP simply means Hokkaido University Short Exchange Program. HUSTEP program is a program you travel from Ebony State University to Hokkaido University. It's a, it's a program that gets you to work with world class professors work, work in, a, it gets you, gives you and some experience in working in a world-class laboratory. And of course, it's also, it's a program that will enable you to meet with international students from all over the world. It's a program that will help you to learn different cultures, different cultural backgrounds, different languages. And of course, it's a program that is loaded with so many opportunities. And so you wouldn't want to miss this kind of program that is this loaded. However, to be able to get the full benefit of this participation, participating in HUSTEP program, there are things you need to know. Because obviously, sometimes we do, we, we, we human being, we um, do some mistakes that are not intentional, and I call it an innocent mistake. So having this kind of orientation before you go for a program like HUSTEP program, you need to be grounded, you need to be oriented, you need to know what to do and what not to do. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Now, the first thing, there are seven things you need to have in mind to be careful of. The first thing is your first impression. Making the first good impression to your professors here, your co students here is very important. Your, your first impression has to do with your mannerism, your first impression has to do with the things you say. Your first impression has to do with so many things. I know you know what first impression is, given the good first impression about yourself. Be greeting, always greeting is a very good first impression. It shows a, a sign, the sign of courtesy. It shows that you have courtesy. It shows that you're somebody who is respectful. You need to also be cheerful. You need to be a cheerful person because cheerful and friendly because this makes you approachable. It even makes them to be able to be free around you and to speak with you and to have some kind of chat with you. Chat, academic chat, uh, you know, and other academic related chat as well. No, now the number two point you need to, number th two thing you need to have in mind is being yourself. You need to be yourself and know your boundaries at the same time. You know, when we talk about being oneself, it's not just 
you just being yourself and just been living carelessly, behaving carelessly, no. You need to be yourself in, yourself in times of being, just be yourself. You don't need to be nervous. You don't need to be too cautious. Oh, are they watching me? They said I should be myself. Should I do this? Should I do that? You know the right things to do. You know the right things to focus your energy on. Being yourself means to free yourself, of course, so that's because it helps them to know, to see your genuity, to, to see who you are. You can't just be, um, you know, just be, uh, when I say be yourself, I don't mean you should always be too conscious of yourself. Free yourself, talk, rapport, you know, discuss with people, but know your boundaries, most especially with opposite sex. For example, if you're a guy, be careful with how you relate with ladies. If you're a lady, be careful how you relate with guys. And also from the aspect of the guys, be careful of how humorous you want to be, you know, joking and all that. You need to have make, you need to allow your joke to have boundaries. I'm speaking this based on my personal observation from the things that I've seen from the past few step student and all that. You need to have your jokes have to have boundary. The way you rapport with the opposite sex has to have boundaries and all that so you need to be you need to have self-control you need to be very cautious you need to know what you're saying you need to check your mannerism you need to check the way you approach people you speak with people and all that so the next one is participation in lab activities it's very important you participate in lab activities showing that showing them that you are hard working showing letting your professor see that you are a serious minded people i mean you're a serious minded person that you're hard working says a lot of good things about it. Of course, it still has to do with first impression, but I'm putting this as a separate slide and one of the points you need to put to have at heart, to put in your mind so as to know what you're doing if, you're really, if you really want to reap the full benefit of your Q-step participation. Number one thing here is to show interest in other students' research work. Ask questions. Curiosity is what brings about innovation. Ask questions. Think outside the box, you know, contribute, attend um, lab seminars, ask questions, contribute, things like that. Participate in research activities. Volunteer to join others to go call, even if it's not your experiment, because you're an step student, you are not a research student per se in the laboratory. But, you know, you putting your mind and attending active research activities in your laboratory says a lot of good things about you. Say something good about you to your professor and to your professors. Your professor, you have you be assigned to one professor, but of course the professor has an associate. So that's why I'm saying professors. And also to your co-students. It helps you to find a very special place in their heart, if you ask me. And also join volunteer. You don't need to be persuaded to succeed because I'm sure that volunteering to join others to collect samples, for example, samples for their experiments in which you will be in the seminar to listen to is very important. It shows the, a sign of commitment. It shows resilience. It shows that you are interested in the laboratory because how can you be offered an opportunity when you are not showing interest for the opportunity? Yeah. So the next thing on my list is being trustworthy. You need to be trustworthy. You need to be transparent in everything you are doing. Your professor cannot recommend you if he has found you not to be trustworthy. He can't recommend you for a scholarship. He can't, rec he can't recommend you to a co-professor to, to receive you as a potential postgraduate student. He can't recommend, he can't even take you to his own laboratory. So you really need to be very careful. Always say the truth. I did all these things to make during my few step days and it helped me. So you need to be transparent, you need to be truthful, you, you need to be very careful. That's all I'm trying to say. Be trustworthy, be truthful, be transparent, say the truth and do the truth, report the truth, say the truth, everything. So you know what I mean when I say you should be trustworthy, it's a key for uh, advancement. It's a key here in Japan, it's a key to move you forward, to be able to have that confidence to recommend you for uh, postgraduate studies. Now, the next thing is being punctual. For example, when you come to Hokkaido University, when, you're, when God has helped you and you're shortlisted for the program, and then you are here for the program, the first thing, you'll be given an advisor and the name of your advisor even before coming for the program. So when you come, the first, for my own case, the first meeting was at uh, 
Student uh, Affairs Center. There is this center, OIA, it's called OIA here. So my professor actually, <laughs> well, it was really early. I was early, but it was earlier. It wasn't, it wasn't even time. I think I was 10 minutes earlier, but he, I think he got there 20 minutes earlier. So you can, I didn't feel good. I didn't get there late. I get there early, but he was earlier. So for as somebody who has this experience, that was not a minus for me. It, it's because I didn't get there late. I even get, got there early, but I wished I had known that they usually arrive earlier, maybe 15 or 20 minutes earlier. I would have got there even 30 minutes earlier. So what I'm trying to say is, at least with your, this thing still boils down to the first impression. Your first impression, meeting with your professor for the first time, you really need to get there earlier. If I'm to advise you, I would say get there at least 30 minutes earlier, sit down and be quiet. He will come and join you and he will be happy to meet you, to see that he you got there before him. He will say a lot of good things about you. You will even see such professor will be eager. Oh, this person would be a good student because this person is for time. This person has respect for time. You know how positively it can show you, it can paint you in a positive light. So I'm encouraging you be punctual. Punctuality is key in everything we do. The next thing is uh, uh, part-time jobs. I have noticed from, uh, from observation that um, few step students come when they come uh, for few step program, they begin to focus on part-time jobs it is not a good idea. Most especially if you are a scholarship student. If you have just a scholarship, concentrate on your study. Don't come here and major in your minor and be minoring in your major. Your major, the, the, the reason you were given a just scholarship is for you to be able to concentrate on the reason why you are here, on your short exchange program to have the full, to, to have the full uh, benefits of your study here. They want you to concentrate. They didn't want you to be distracted. That is why they find you worthy to give you a scholarship. So if you're a scholarship student and you come here and then you are doing part-time job, of course, you will have to seek your professor's permission for that part-time job. Most of them, or some of them could say yes. But of course, because they don't want to be forcey. But try to now imagine what you could lose with that. Because it's not saying something good about you. They will tell themselves, you've been given a scholarship so that you wouldn't have to be distracted with part-time jobs and all that. And then you are asking, you know what, that's, what that can make them to be thinking of you. You don't, you, such kind of professor wouldn't look at you as a serious student. We'll just see you as a, a money freak kind of person, somebody that just that just came here to have fun and to make money. And that's not the reason why you're here. So when you come, most especially, if possible, I could even say, even if you're not on scholarship, try to come with enough money so that you can concentrate fully. However, you can do what is best for you. But if you've, you're being given a JASO scholarship, I recommend, I highly recommend, focus on your study, be serious, explore activities, go for sightseeing. And the school also um, have excursions, at, go for them, go with your camera, take pictures, have the full experience. Don't come here and focus on part-time jobs. It could rub off in a negative light, it will rub off on you negatively. So be very careful because this can hinder your long-term benefits of this Q-Step participation. Q-Step, participating in Q-Step program can be highly beneficial if you're using your head, if you're a disciplined person, if you're consistent, if you're resilient, it can pay off nicely, quickly and all that. But don't use your own hand to stop your progress, let me just put it that way. Okay, so the the next, but the last but not the least factor, which is the seven, the seventh key point is the G factor. You cannot take God out of the equation of you, your success, of your step of successful participation in step program. For me, you can't take God out of the equation. You need to be very prayerful. You need to know what you're doing. And of course, being in a foreign land for the first time can be very, can can feel somehow because this is a place you're not used to this is a place you really do not have direct family members so one can feel lonely so know what knowing what to fall back to by prayer by knowing the lord you know it can help you a lot it helped me i'm giving you hints that helped me during my huge step study and why i'm here today that's why i'm giving you this and that is why i called it an orientation which is also what I decided to target, Hugh Step, a game changer. Hugh Step program is a get, was a get, is a game changer for me, and it still is, because 
the program, like I said earlier, is a very loaded program and you need to know what you're doing and can be a tremendous ch game changer for you if you put all these factors together and use them. So all these points put together, all these points put together are a game changer for me and it can be same for you too. Okay, so this is me. <laughs> this is me on my doctoral graduation ceremony day and this is Dr. Clark. This, yeah, that is Dr. Clark's portrait. And this is him here. He, he was one of the founding fathers of uh, uh, our faculty, the uh, School of Agriculture. And he has one major pieces of, uh, piece of advice he gave us, which is be ambitious. Yeah, be ambitious as this has been my uh, watchword. And most especially, he also told us that we should have that frontier spirit to be able to tackle global challenges. And I have been using this as my motto ever since, and it has worked for me. This is my professor, my wonderful professor. He taught me resilience, and I'm very grateful to God for him. Okay, so I want to say, if it worked for me, it can work for you. Okay, go get it. I know you can do it. All the best to you all. And thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for listening.